So I'm at the building now that is today known as the Baron's Court. Now for the past couple of months I've been driving past this building and looking at it and remembering when I used to come here that this place back in the 80s was actually, believe it or not, a disco. It was also then a, a pub and then it became a Toby Carvery and now it's become a pub once again. But looking at this building, I often think, oh, what a lovely building and how beautiful it is and how old it is, but never really have looked into it as anything more than a beautiful building. I've never really looked into the history. And so, that's what I've decided to do on this episode, is have a look at the history of Barron's Court. grey and ancient gentry house comes from the will of Matthew Craddock of Swans who died in 1533. The ancient medieval manor of Cogan was purchased by George Herbert. He had purchased this from King Henry VIII in 1544. The Herbert family of Cogan were related to a vast family network who had lands and manors across South Wales and beyond. The Herbert family were also related to the Earl of Pembroke and as a result they benefited from his patronage and often held high offices within Glamorganshire and a court. George Herbert was actively engaged in political affairs, both of local and national importance. For example, George helped to set up the Act of Union in 1536 and part of this was aligning Wales and its laws with England in effect becoming one country. George fought for King Henry VIII in the Battle of Boulogne in 1540. George Herbert became Glamorgan's first sheriff in 1540 to 1541. He was Glamorgan's first knight in Parliament and Mayor of Cardiff in 1553 to name but a few of the offices held by this powerful and influential man. Cogan's Pill continued to be inhabited by the Herberts throughout the 17th and 18th century. But as time went by, these great Tudor houses of Glamorgan were seen by many as to be outdated, uncomfortable and unfashionable, unfashionable by their fashion-conscious owners. Sadly, it had lost its prominent position of grandeur and importance and was relegated in status to a mere farmhouse. In 1793 the house in the manor of Cogan was purchased by the Earl of Butte who continued to rent Cogan Pill as a farmhouse. By the early 19th century the Great Hall had apparently been reduced to the use of a barn. Cogan Pill continued to be a farmhouse until the middle of the 19th century when it was renovated and converted into a comfortable residence for a relative of the Marquis of Butte. Cogan Pill House continued to be a private residence until the middle of the 20th century when it then became, as mentioned, a pub, disco followed by 
a carvery restaurant. By this time it was sadly gutted of most of its ancient interior. Oak panelled walls, fireplaces, ancient oak beams and spiral staircases have been swept away to accommodate open planning with many of the rooms and corridors where the Herbert's family were born, lived, schemed and died being no more. The building however can still be seen and still be appreciated as what it was, a fantastic Tudor manor. I found an interesting article from a newspaper about the sale of this house because the people could no longer live in here, they felt it was too big for them, the elderly lady. But what was interesting, you see in this picture here, the people are gathered together. This is in the 60s. They're selling off all that they have. People are here buying. The, sadly the last person to live in there she said she was keeping these things and she was going to put them in a new bungalow that she was having built. What a change isn't it from this beautiful house into this bungalow. They were hoping in the local council to even pull this building down and build houses on the land. But fortunately this great building was saved. Though much of the land was sold and built upon, as we see here with this busy road at this junction, at least it still stands here as a memorial. I found some memoirs of a, a lady here who actually lived in this house for a while. She was an evacuee in the Second World War. She came to live here when her mum was interviewed because they were looking for someone to help within the house. Her mum did that and the family moved in with them and she explains what it was like to live in this manor. It was still a beautiful place. She talks about uh, the furniture, the panelling, the things that could be seen around, how the house led onto a garden and to a gate and into an orchard and fields and vegetable patches. You can just picture, can't you? what this must have looked like when it was a farmhouse but also a country home a beautiful loved country home at the time she was saying that uh, it was housing three Canadian soldiers as people were billeted in different places but it still had that feel of a lovely country manner so come and visit it yourself one day come and have a look Go inside and look at this beautiful interior, take a look at the building and try and picture yourself back in the days when this was a beautiful house surrounded by countryside with the little pill or the river, the stream, not the stream, the river coming up alongside the Admiral Park and his ship up and coming up to this beautiful building that was known as Cogan's Pill. <laughs>